Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club for people hate reading. This month's theme is movies that are funny or unintentionally funny, so James picked the movie by Mel Brooks called Blazing Saddles. Yay. And he brings you movie news at the end of the program. Blazing Saddles. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Ryan Preston. And the old guy. There's right there. So, James, what's this movie about? <laughs> this is my homage. I don't have a cowboy hat, so this is the uh, best I can do. To run a western town, a corrupt politician boss. Corrupt <laughs> politician boss. That's an interesting one. Appoints a black sheriff. I am DD. Who promptly becomes his most formidable adversary. <gasps> Dum, dum, dum. The first thing I want to say is I love the riff on every single cowboy movie theme song ever. <laughs> that it's. I, I love the, the quote where they actually got the guy who used to do all, a lot of them, got him to do it, and they never actually told him that this was a spoof. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, seriously. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, this is like a who's who of comedy in this. I mean, I oh, love no, Madeline Kitty. Kahn. Yes. I, I love Slim Pickens. Oh, yes. Oh, man. Oh, Slim yeah. Pickens. Great guy. And, <laughs> and I, I got to say, just, just uh, every time I watch this movie, I'm always super excited. Gene Wilder, who's my, yes. my all time uh, favorite. Another ever. genius. Did you know that uh, Gene Wilder was actually not their top pick? Yeah. Not the original pick. <laughs> he kind the of guy fell who, into it. well, the guy who actually was supposed to be playing mm -hmm. uh, Jim, who. Sometimes it's called Jim. Um, Waco, Waco kid. The Waco kid mm -hmm. uh, was the guy who originally played him. Was actually a drunk. He was actually drunk in the first scene where he's hanging off the thing. He was actually literally drunk for that role. Mm -hmm. Oh, he was a method playing act. a drunk. He was a method act. And yeah. um, but he, apparently the they, guy had they a history booted of, him for it. He had also had apparently had a history of other problems. Yeah. It was one of those things that they. Yeah, just I'm sure there was more. To, I'm glad it, they. I'm glad it ended up with Jim. I am too. I, it I mean, would not know. be the same movie. No. No, on the same stuff. note, uh, Richard Pryor, also co-writer of the movie, um, was supposed to play Cleavon Little's part, yes. but uh, due to his sort of drug problems yeah. and insurance issues, they really couldn't you yeah. know, get him to, to, to buckle down and do the role. No, I, I don't his, think his he little... would have been right for the role. No, no he would have been too good. Yeah. I like yeah. how Cleavon Little, he's, he's perfect. perfect. Yes, or, absolutely. Or, I'd say we're too offensive. This movie needs something a little, a little more subtle, I think. Well, I um... well, he had just the right amount of charm to to really pull it off. Yeah, yeah. that's why I don't th I don't think Pryor would have been able to do that. And this you... is actually my favorite role that Harvey Corman ever has oh, ever well, played. Oh, it was a good one for Harvey. Just yeah, amazing, <laughs> Did amazing. Headly. Now Headly. go do that voodoo <laughs> that you do <laughs> and this, so well. And this is one of the most quotable <laughs> movies ever. Like my yes. favorite, top, my favorite one ever is Jim consoling Bart. What did you expect? Welcome, Sonny. Make yourself at home. Marry my daughter. You've got to remember these people are just simple farmers. These are people of the land, the common clay of the new west. You know, morons. morons. <laughs> and just the delivery on that. I I literally yeah. quote this movie almost every day, and the one, one of my favorite ones is, "Isn't it a lovely morning?" <laughs> and nobody really understands where that's from because yeah, that's people true. just think I'm just. Yeah, saying it's a back. lovely morning. You know, I, I often say that 16 <laughs> is my limit on schnitz and <laughs> <laughs> um, Now, yeah, there was, there's just so many subtle things like Anal Johnson, who keeps the bar clean. Yeah. <laughs> there's just so many dirty, dirty, dirty jokes. Yeah. Well, that, Will Brooks is a dirty, dirty old man. Yes. You know, it's, yes, I, I was a dirty thinking, young man. I was thinking that, do you think that movie could be made today? No. No. Yeah. no. See, Especially I, with how many times they said oh, I know. the N-word. Oh, my well, goodness. I was I, actually thinking about that. Now, think about Django says it more. Yes. Well, but this is a comedy. Yeah. Yeah, they, they couldn't... Um, Satire. It's it's been it's the, the whole civil rights thing's gone on long enough that that Tarantino could really whip it at people's faces really hard, you know, with something like Django Unchained. But this one was yeah. so kind of in the in the face of it that the, it had to be a little more subtle and a little more satirical, but still made its point. You know? Well, I tell you, at the time it was earth shattering. I mean, really, yeah, sure. uh, you know, yeah, seventy four. Yeah, and all I could think about is and while we were watching it uh, the other day, is my I, this, this movie just could not be made today. No, no, not at all. Couldn't. This would be, there would be picketing. There would oh, be absolutely <laughs> movie so, theaters being shut down. It, 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 so uh, with that said, it's one of the, another movie with a black hero. Yeah, 
So yeah, with, and but, but with that said, I'm money. almost surprised that there isn't picketing and rioting going on that, that it's available in Redbox. I mean, oh. you know. Is it? I, no. I just okay, I was going to say, is know. it on Redbox? Well, That's well, awesome. Well, I don't well, know. Well, did you look I at think, that? I think like Tarantino. I looked on Netflix. It wasn't on Netflix. I think, I think uh, like yeah, Tarantino, okay. Mel Brooks. But I own it. <laughs> People really love Mel Brooks. Well, you can buy it. So I mean, it's I still think, available. Well, I think the reason why is because, you know, like like Tarantino, Mel Brooks, all these people are really love, so I think they get a pass. Well, if, you know, say Ryan decided to make a film, he wouldn't get away with it because he's not as beloved. Yeah. Oh, no, I think, I think you could get away with making this movie now. I kind of disagree with you guys. I don't think so. I really I, don't. I absolutely think you could. No. It, there's nothing in there that's... that's the mm -hmm. Irish would be so pissed off. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so offensive. It's so offensive to do, so many groups that uh, it, we're so PC now. Um, no, no, no. My point is, is, is everything is is not for the sake of being mean. It's for the sake of making a point. You know, like sort of like look at look at how silly this shit actually used to be in the eighteen. I also. I also don't think they could do it just because most modern comedies aren't as funny as this. I mean, you've got you've got lines from like Head, Headley Lamar. My mind is a raging torrent flooded with rivets, rivets of thought cascading into a wall of, waterfall of creative alternatives. Taggart, God damn it, Mr. Lamar, you use your tongue prettier than a twenty dollar whore. And the look on the guy's face going. Dude, after the show for a while, while John Charney reads the script. Yeah. Jeez. Well, I I like the. Hey, that just lets you know. It, but think of the scene where he's talking and, he, and he, they bring out the paddles. I can't think of the name yeah. of the things. And he's like, the, yeah. the little devil's love games. Yeah. You know? What was up with Quasimodo? And then, oh, that's, that's oh, funny. I, I want to know how just, Mel Bucks kept his eyes crossed through all, all of that. I don't know how he did oh, that. I mean, he, uh, he practice. Watch. That was not normal. But then he's sitting there, and then you also have the whole uh, um, the the Dom DeLuise scene. Mm-hmm. That right. they're making fun of the gays. I that's another. That thing. was hysterical. <laughs> that, was, that is actually one of my favorite scenes it of the is. movie. It really Tom DeLuise does such a fantastic <laughs> role with that. He just. Uh, oh. My yeah. my favorite part of that is it, just like the end. You know, he's he's getting sick and tired of the people. It's like, okay, you f it. You know. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. But Ryan, I really don't think that this movie would pass this today i really don't oh, I, I i think you could i, I don't think, think it so. would get a lot of a lot of press and whatever but i don't think anybody anybody who got it you know what i mean would would defend it well tell me a comedy today that has come out since let's say 2005 that I mean, is similar to this comedy that had to do with slaves his family was dutch <laughs> yeah come on <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> No, but my, so, I mean, you, you got them picking on the Dutch, you got them picking on the blacks, you got them picking on the Chinese, you got them picking on the Irish, you got them picking on the gays. Oh, the Irish line was the greatest line in the movie. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> everybody but the Irish. Or <laughs> uh, he killed everybody. more, right. he killed more men than Cecil D. DeMille. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um... But I really don't think that that they could push it as much as they did. Oh, I I, I think they could. I think okay. modern audience. I don't know. Anyway. So I'll tell you what, our, our big oh. audience, the thousand of you out there, you tell us if you think this movie could be made today or not. Yeah, and I if you guys, you. if you guys don't know who that band is in the desert, that's Count Basie. Go that's look right. him up too. That's right. That's right. By you the way, that. that's a an alive Count Basie. That was a <laughs> no longer a, anymore. A true. Jazz band, swing. I would actually call them swing yeah. jazz. They still call it jazz, but they yeah. swing. They did played swing. He did yeah. all kinds it's of stuff. Big band jazz. Yeah, big band. Right. <laughs> actually, one of the most amazing things that you always hear that one of the things of lore in this movie, as I've heard over the years, that uh, Burton Gillum was actually couldn't say the N word at the time to uh, to Cleveland Little, and I Cleveland could... Little took him aside and said, "You know what? It's okay. You can say it." You know, it's it's all in good fun and no words. However, if you said it in another situation, <laughs> we'd have words. So you had to clarify it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I would be uncomfortable as hell. Right. <laughs> I tell you. Oh I yeah. Just, I just. Uh, I I love how they played Gene Wilder's fast hands. Like the whole yeah, time yeah. his hands are right here, and all of a sudden, ding 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 ding. You know. Yeah. Well, actually, he was sitting like this. Yeah. Yeah. Like this on the thing, yeah. and then he. I always like it. Well, I. Um, <laughs> 
that's actually one of my favorite all-time scenes is when he's sitting there and they're talking to each other and tell me how you got out here. Oh, you know, I must, I must. <laughs> like, I used to quote... I used to I quote that thing. I love the contrast of Gene Wilder moving so damn <laughs> slow after he's done moving so fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. That and then when they're smoking weed and he and he comes up <laughs> doing the Mickey Mouse voice. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now, where did he get that? I, I'm sure a lot of you people are actually wondering, but yes, they the they were Yiddish speaking Indians. Mm-hmm. Yes, they were. They and, were. and for those of you that don't know, Svartzis means blacks. Right. And no, no, that needs mega. I can't do it. Mishuga, don't be crazy. There's gonna be some. There, there's a whole translation the now on there. Um, <laughs> back when this movie came out, if you didn't speak Yiddish, you didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> Truthfully, I, I think that's hysterical. <laughs> it is. Um, my, my my mom went with her grandparents who were uh, who mm-hmm. were fluent in Yiddish, and when that scene came up, they were the only people laughing in the theater. <laughs> and there's two of them. <laughs> I believe it. I believe that. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's just I love the subtlety of his humor that he throws in this film, and this film to me highlights really how funny and how truly of a mastermind of the comedy Mel Brooks can be. Because I think this movie's a lot more subtler than Men in Tights or even Spaceballs. Yes, <laughs> there's a lot and, to this movie. That's... There's a lot of subtle comedy, and then there's a lot of non-subtle. Oh comedy. yeah, kind of like like let's read from the Matthew. Let's read from the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and Doc. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I got I have to believe that he worked for years on this script. I, I don't think this was think a so. script that was done overnight, like Men in Tights or something. Like that. You said prior. Well, part I think it's much more of a point to make than, than Men in Tights. Prior was, yeah, part, right. was one of the writers in this, right? Yes, Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor. I, yeah. I think I can see Pryor's influence in this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's one of the reasons why I think this movie is so amazing and, is, is Pryor's. And Pryor well, may have helped Mel Brooks use the N word. He probably did. You know, because well, he, he probably his pitch. I mean, that, yeah. that the, the the whole you know black hero. You know, no, everybody would would, would be you know hating him, and this is what would happen, and this right. is what would happen, and you know, oh yeah, yeah, that's straight out of. One of his comedy routines. Or the the, yeah, the, yeah. the bit he's in the sheriff's office. Here's the knock on the window. Opens it up, and there's a little old lady handing him a pie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you would have yeah, the well, decency like to mention I spoke to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have the good taste not to mention that we talked. Yes. Decency. And, and just think, 25 years, you'd be able to shake their hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the what what. Well, uh, John was kind of joking because he knew when I picked this uh, theme, when I pitched this theme to the guys, mm-hmm. is that I would be picking this film. And my backup film, if John had picked this one, would have been uh, Hear No Evil, See No Evil, which is Richard Pryor playing right next to Gene Wilder. Mm-hmm. And it's just another hilarious mm-hmm. film. If you guys haven't seen that one and you were kind of interested in it. Uh, yeah. Pryor's blind, Gene Wilder's deaf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, it's hysterical. It's a great it really one. is. It's a great yeah. one. So that would have been my my backup if this one didn't hadn't gone through. Um, I, it now, won't win an Academy Award, but it, it's it's hysterical. I, I, I will say another thing is I don't remember. I, I think it was Mel Brooks has a tendency to break the third wall where he talks to the audience, and there's a few times that happen in here. Like the most notable is the the what's his name the the corrupt politician actually talked to the audience and said, "Why am I asking you?" Oh yeah, Milford's love to break that fourth wall down. Yeah, fourth wall. Yeah. Excuse me. But this one also, there are some little things that most people don't know about this one. This one was actually nominated for three Oscars. Um, Probably for the songs, right? Uh, one of them was for the song. One of them for Madeline Kahn, and one of them was for Mel Brooks. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. not surprised. Kahn, anything she's in, she's killing it. Young Frankenstein, yeah. she was amazing. Oh yeah. What about Clue? Oh, yeah. Clue? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to. I'm almost positive she was in that movie. She's funny. She's uh, there was so a funny. Mongo was also played by a former NFL star. Oh yeah, he yeah. went on to later Alex to play, He yep. went on later to play the dad from Webster, if I'm right. not mistaken. He he also did uh, talk television. Uh, he was in the early stages of being, you know, one of the personalities like on Good Morning America and things like that. He started as one of those. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. And he did uh, football commentary as well. He was a, he was an ex uh, NFL, NFL football player. So, it, yeah. And James Earl Jones was also looked at for the role of Bart. Oh, <laughs> really? That been yeah, totally that, that one would have been great. The, I want to hear a Luke. Yeah, I'm your father. 
Um, At that stage in his life, it would have been a totally different movie. Oh, man. I want to see that movie now. <laughs> not, not me. I, I really love this movie. Oh, are you I want to see George, uh, James Earl Jones, Sidney Poitier, every serious black actor. See him do comedy? They're, they didn't do comedy. Movie. Yeah. There is something I heard, and I don't know if it's true. I've heard this is the first time that a fart was ever heard on camera in a, television, in a movie. Yes. In and, film in general. Yeah. And it, on purpose. And yeah. Mel Brooks decided that watching all the cowboy movies, knowing that they were drinking coffee but, yeah, and right. eating beans, that there would be a lot of gas going yep. through. So he decided to make an entire scene dedicated to passing gas. You know, I don't care if you're 12 years old or 1,200 years old. That shit's still funny. Yeah. I, no pun I share a story And about Jonathan. the fifth fart is the one that's oh, like yeah. the juiciest when you're like, oh, oh dude, change dude. your shorts, man. <laughs> I had the opportunity to see this movie with my father when he was still alive. Oh, and my God, he laughed so hard he had tears coming out of his eyes on that scene. Oh, my. He, oh, it was hysterical. And I can't help but think of my dad every time I watch this movie because he just oh, yeah, loved it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. I remember uh, a father son moment right yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. It was hysterical. I remember <laughs> for for these young kids back in the day before they had cell phones, there was <laughs> they, the radio would still do those calls. You know, fifth caller who can guess what this is. Right. And they played that on the <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> Just a little snippet of that, and there was a, a couple of them, the farts, and I'm yeah. like, okay, wait, wait, wait. And then there was a burp, I'm like, that's Blazing Saddles. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom looked over at me and goes, really? I said, yeah, I guarantee that's Blazing Saddles. We couldn't get home in time to call. Oh, dang. <laughs> well, just, I was like, I knew that off the first get it? 10 seconds. Did yeah. somebody get it? Somebody did yes, get it's it? Like, yeah. It's like, you know, the moment you hear the first three notes of Purple Haze, and you're like, Hendrix. No. Yeah. Uh, but it, yeah. You've heard like two farts and a burp, and you're like, no, Brooks! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or Manny Khan going, it's true. It's oh, true. I, 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 love, I love her bit when she was making fun of the guy. You know, the guy had her his feet on there, and he said, what's your name? My name's Tex, man. And just Tex going, name. <laughs> just going after that. This, every bit she was in was hilarious. Yeah, she, she was really good at, at the... At the role that she played, I'd be willing to bet a lot of this was ad libbed. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, a lot of it. I, I mean, these it. guys were so good at comedy that yeah. it just, you know, Mel Brooks said, "Okay, this is the idea, go." And, yeah. And I bet that's where something. And, and, and but I could so also yeah. see Mel Brooks. He is he is probably the top person in Hollywood that I would like to meet. Mel Brooks would be probably yeah. the either the number one or number two. Definitely the number one comedy person. In My Hollywood. number one and number two would be Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner. Yeah, right. That, that's the great. Stories right. between the two of those people have yeah. to be written down before they go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, probably, I, probably some of the most epic Hollywood stories you've ever heard. Anyway, I could see him. What I was going with is, I could see Mel Brooks being being very uh, determined in, in his idea of becoming becoming film and i would say that he would probably do it in a, in a in a very fun and and joking manner but to be very serious about his comedy i can see him being that too wouldn't you like to see all the film on the cutting room floor oh yeah all the stuff they met you know that we've never seen all oh, the, yeah. the outtakes all the outtakes oh, oh, would just man. be incredible well, I know the the blu-ray i have of it um which is an older release has some of the uh the cut the the scenes that were cut out yeah. deleted scenes you know one of the scene when Madeline Kahn scene she goes on stage is her walking out in a normal you know like a normal outfit her walking behind a screen and coming out in that do you that... mind if I step into something more comfortable <laughs> exactly <laughs> pretty much ah that feels better yeah. <laughs> it's just so awesome and the other part was when when Mongo was attacking you had you had uh, Oh, you the had, bitch was coming up with the candy gram. You had, oh, yeah. well, you had and they probably wouldn't give me credit either. Yeah. <laughs> See, the, the funny, the, the one part in the funny end of the lead scene of, of that part was you had uh, Mongo come up to this like dummy with a gun and said, "If you want to fight, please put in a quarter." So he puts in a quarter. This cannon falls out of the chest and shoots him. <laughs> But I think the candy gram was a much better bit. <laughs> yeah, so the candy gram. Ways of doing I, I liked Mongo, it because huh? they came up with the, the Looney Tunes music too. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was just that da, 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 was da, 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 just da, 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 da. so hilarious the way yeah. that he came and in and even came in like like Bugs Bunny. He came mm -hmm. in with the with the persona of Bugs Bunny. If you guys see Bugs Bunny, 
and you see him coming in, they're almost identical and in the way they walk. He slides in, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I, anyway. So, what do you give this movie? It wasn't the five. There is no whole bars on that one. That one's a five. <laughs> Ryan? Uh, it was a resounding bloody <laughs> five. This movie will hold up forever. Yeah. Forever. So, old guy. Oh, yeah. It's got to be a five. <laughs> I, ladies and gentlemen, you have an extremely rare thing. Wow. And I haven't five. given them anything a five yet. Five this is my first five. Across the board. Because this wow. is just such an amazing movie. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to remind you that we do have a Facebook page. You want to tell us how bad you suck? Do you disagree with my choice of weight commanders being funny? <laughs> <laughs> You're wrong, but it's uh, hilarious. But let us know. Is there a theme you'd like us to do? Tell us how much Ryan, James, or I suck, even the old guy. So please let us know. All four or five. Of you. I'll buy <laughs> four or five, oh, four or five yeah. of you. <laughs> want to let you know. Okay, you guys... so don't forget to hit the donate button, too, because I, I kind of yes. keep throwing money at one of our hosts here, and it just seems disappearing <laughs> in a, a big hole and <laughs> it never gets used. So I need a donation badly. Okay. <laughs> Apparently he's Irish. <laughs> so, so, ladies and gentlemen, just, just let us know. Also want to do you a favor. Take a look at last week's episode, which was episode 100, where we did shorts. Yes. One of our favorite things here to do is highlight young and upcoming talent. So just look it up. We had a bit of a documentary, too. Yes. And uh, this week's movie news, if he has any, because it was a slow week, is James. <sighs> you know, the, truly, this is actually all I could find, but um, I just want to throw this out to Hollywood. You suck. Um, come Wait, up with something legitimate. What do you mean new? You I mean, the news right now is Brad Pitt talking about some nutter that he found in his bed. Are you kidding me? This is stupid. Um, anyway. Tom, that, Tom, Tom Cruise? Well, what Tom I, Cruise, what I, his movie opened up poorly. I got my, That's my one little bit of news. His new <clears throat> movie, uh, which usually in Europe, opens up first, which it does, and he almost always kills it. Apparently this new movie, and I've forgotten the name at the moment, I'm sorry, uh, what bombed in in Europe. So, uh, but it's Edge getting good ratings. Is it Edge of Tomorrow with the newest I one? can't remember. I'm I sorry. Know. I apologize for all of you out there. I can't remember the name, but anyway. I know just, what it is, but Edge it's Edge of Tomorrow, yes. Anyway, the point is, is uh, the question was, can a 51-year-old still do an action movie? And that offended me because I can easily believe a 51-year-old man so, can still do an action movie. Oh, I, but it, I got something. I don't know about Tom Cruise. <laughs> I got something. Oh, oh. You, yes. That's, uh, right. We want to throw it out to, uh, you're going to have to give me the actress's name, but Alice from the Brady Bunch right. has Anne passed B. away today. Davis. Anne B. Davis. She, she passed away the other uh, the other night, apparently slipped, just never woke up. And you know, She it, has actually done more things than just the Brady Bunch. Oh, no, she, yeah, no, she's she did, done but, quite a bit of things. But, she, most, but, most but she's people, most famous for it. Yeah. Most people know her from the Brady Bunch because as, as cheesy as the show was, there's a mo most people I know, multiple generations have seen it and have always enjoyed it. She's a, she's an early television actress. She the, I can't remember the hit she was in before, but she was in a show before that was very, very popular. She had won in numerous Emmys. For that yeah. other show prior to coming on to the Brady I was Bunch, trying to so. think of the name of it, but I have something yeah. pulled up and I can't go yeah. and I'm sorry. I, I'm, I, I know I'm, I'm, old guy. I'm not, I don't have any electronics in front of me today. I'm trying to remember it was <laughs> anyway. anyway. I, I want to say it's a western, but I don't think it was. No, 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 it was a situation comedy. Um, yeah. wow, holy crap. Okay, sorry, but you have your story, uh, because she go was ahead. on like the Bob Cummings show. Mm -hmm. That's it, Clever, Bob Cummings. Love never come back. Yep. Very brave. She did a lot of stuff yes, that was a fairly big hit, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think of Tom Hardy? I thought he sucked his bane. <laughs> Brian? Uh, I, I really like him. I, I kind of liked him, too. I don't. Th I think that it was like just him, the, the portrayal of Bane that you didn't like. Yeah, I know. Because so, I like him in the, was it the fighter? No. So, well, yes. I like Bane, too. I'll defend that shit. He was another one that was a fighter. Anyway, uh, there was a fighting movie. Yeah, we uh, did it, actually. Uh, Warrior. As you can the tell, Warrior, folks, thank you. we yes. don't write notes or prepare for this show. So. No, heck no. <laughs> it's all after we're we're better at at watching. We don't know anything. Everything needs to be ad lib. <laughs> Just like the anyway, show. I, I mean, do, do you know well, who Tom Hardy is? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, He's one of the hardest. How do you guys think of Sam oh. Fisher as being portrayed by Tom Hardy? I you have know? no clue. It really Splinter depends on how they pull him off. It, it, is is it gonna be? Because he's a fairly it's young spy guy. Type thing. Mm. Spy. And it's a it's a he's Tom Clancy. A large to play Sam Fisher. That's kind of what I was thinking a little bit too. He's short. He's not very tall. He's heavy. Yeah. But he's wide. He's mm -hmm. stocky. Yeah, yeah stocky. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. 
He's not I, like overweight. He's just like yeah. built and big, big guy. My yeah. My, yeah. my main problem is because the original voice was Michael Ironside, who's an old character actor. Yeah. Um, he to me has always been the the the, the Splinter Cell guy. So I think he could do it. I think it would really depend on if he slims down. So the question well, is, this is being, because this is being uh, put in uh, the premise. Um, it's called a lead-in. Is he's going to be? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling you, he kind of threw my brain off. Uh, but Tom Party is going to be occupying the role of Sam Fisher. They don't say who's going to be the um, the director or what's going on, but he's working on the script of Tom Hardy. Um, Lyman told IGN, I think we have a great take on how to make an awesome film out of that. So they're going to be... Well, keep in mind, this is something they teased probably six or seven years ago. Or more. So it's Doug Lehman who's put out the Edge of Tomorrow, which is Tom Cruise's movie that is failing. Gosh. So, but I'm interested. I've been wanting one of these uh, Hollywood out there. I also want another, um, but he's also, uh, anyway, I'll get back to it. Uh, but I also want a Halo movie that's decent. That would that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be really I, nice. See, the, the problem with a Halo movie is, and this is what, because I disagree with it, but everybody the says the problem with it is because you boards. don't, you never see oh, the right Master so. Chief's face. And I don't actually see that as a problem because there's quality voice acting, which video games are. I actually don't think that's a problem. Hmm. What do you well, think? Well, feel. Show his damn face okay. in the movie. Because well, I don't think he ever. They, I don't think they ever show his hmm. face in the game ever. Doesn't yeah. matter. That means anybody can play him. Yeah. Well, I think that was part of the mystique oh, of the character, though. Oh crap! Hey, do you know Doug Lehman, the guy who's putting out the Splinter Cell thing, did Swingers? Nineteen ninety-six film. That was swingers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was just. Uh, and then he uh, did all the Borns. And he also did all the Born identities. And I was going to say, your Edge of Tomorrow movie has an 8.1 rating on IMDb. Yeah. Wow. I was saying that the critics in the United States gave it a pretty decent rating, which they did, but it, it is being panned in Europe. So that's kind of a odd because it doesn't usually happen to Tom Cruise. Well, and Bill, wow, Bill Paxton's in this movie. Holy crap. I didn't know that. Maybe he did something that pissed off the Europe's. Did he bounce know. on somebody's couch? I don't know. Maybe he said he loved Katy Perry. <laughs> Maybe they don't like Scientologists anymore. Well, they don't in German, Germany. There They're actually go. illegal. Scientologists? <laughs> yeah, Scientology is illegal in Germany. It's considered That's a pretty good idea. A cult. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> would be the ones to say we don't have time for this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to get on their bad side either. So I, you guys are okay. I'm not but the this. Germans? No. Yeah, Germans are great. So next week's movie, if I remember that the the way this thing goes, is Ryan's pick. I give up. <laughs> so so Ryan, what uh, what movie do you um, have? I picked one that uh, wasn't unintentionally funny, but uh, unexpectedly funny. Uh, when I saw it, it was I don't think it was ever advertised as anything more than an action movie, but I can't remember laughing so hard at an action movie and not expecting to at all. Please don't, don't, what I was, what Please I was don't watching. be last action um, hero. So this week I picked Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Oh! oh that's yes. a oh, another Doug okay. Lehman. <laughs> we were just talking that about That really was funny. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. done with that. So, ladies and gentlemen, next week's movie is Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Smith. Smith. I gave the movie a five. Ryan gave the movie a five. That's Blazing five. Saddles. Blazing, he's not. Blazing Saddles, not, not Mr. Mr. Mrs. Smith. Well, hey, you never know. So, ladies and gentlemen, Blazing Saddles got five out of five from everybody at Real Flix Reviews, which is extremely rare if you've watched the show yeah. for the last 101 <laughs> episodes. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Thank you.